Is this a pentagon? Oh, it's definitely a pentagon. <laughs> Hey guys, Bjergsen here. Today I'm going to be watching and ranking some of the most legendary outplays of all time, chosen by you guys, the fans. So, uh, let's get into the place. Location, Smithy, trying to hide away. They still don't have the cooldown on Syndra's ult back up. Oh, they might try for the attempt right here if you can find the QE. Nice juke by Kappa, will be hit a little bit. Nice double sun comes in, ult comes in as well. He's got a lot of a play to play around with. They find that first stun, they find some daily, but Ignite means he will get the solo kill, the 1v2, and Caps tries it for Jensen, and here comes Mickey! G2 slaughtering Team Liquid! I think I remember this one. I remember thinking, why is TL playing Syndra, Sejuani mid jungle? Caps just buys the Rectroid's first item and he just can't be killed. I know he watched that. Did he get the reset on his on his Q? Oh man. When he dodges that QE from Syndra. Oh it's it's over now. Oh he cute Sejuani on accident the second time. Smithy bro! You need to run away! Wait, does he kill Jensen too? Oh 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 Mickey comes, Mickey comes. I did say it's really good confidence on the turn from Caps. And his hopes of dreams down the drain. Where would I rank this? Play. It's a good outplay. It's definitely not deserving of triple S. He did make a mechanical, a small mechanical misplay. He failed to reset on the uh, on the second Q after his ult. Uh, everything else was really nice. So the initial juke was really nice. I'm thinking somewhere between S and A. Maybe I'm a harsh critic, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in A for now. I think he had it a little bit too easy playing Merc Treads Irelia, like super OP Irelia. I think it was against Syndra Sejuani. But he played well, he played well, but let's see if, if some of the other plays can, can outdo this one. I really is one of my favorite champions for sure. Just, I think the champion has an unlimited skill cap basically. I mean, you watch uh, Irel King in, in Korea and he just does things that no one else really does on this champion. He's just so fast. Uh, the champion has so much potential around constantly queuing on minions and getting uh, resets, especially if you get Bork. You can one-shot range minions after level nine. Uh, kill melee is from high HP, so there's just so much outplay you can do uh, with the E, hiding it, using it in different ways that people don't expect. Uh, so it's just a champion that you never feel like you never feel like you've mastered her. So there's always uh, you can always practice her more, you can always get better at her, and it's just a really fun, rewarding champ. If you suck at her, the champ really sucks, and you're just gonna look useless in feed. And if you're like insane on the champ, you can just swarm me down the game. Is this a pentagon? Oh, it's definitely a pentagon. <laughs> this is really good awareness to, to space forward into the tower. Do they even see Gragas? No, they don't have any vision. So he just... He sees Gragas for like a second on Braum. Here, giving him vision now. And then he instantly moves forward rather than backwards. That's really well played. Jarman obviously misplays a bit here, but he probably just thought he's like dead meat. I mean, he's 100% dead here if they play well, but that's a lot of like great plays. Takes a little bit of a misplay on the enemy and then good capitalization, which is really what the Uzi did. I'm kind of in SRA again. Is the better play than Caps? I think the, the moment that was really good by Caps was when he dodged the QE from Syndra and he knew the limits of his champion to turn the play around. Uzi had really fast reactions to the Gragas flank and he pretty much did the the best move, the best click to survive. Hmm. So hard to decide. I would say it's a slightly better play than, than the Caps one. I think I would have put it in S. I think it's just a, a good reaction. Most of the play, like the start and the finish, is just like kind of hitting whoever is right in front of him, but the flash heal and movement was really good. Yeah, laning as Uzi in the 1v1 tournament was not fun. <laughs> Man, uh, I think. I think we went 1-1, but I feel like the game that I won, I kind of cheesed out a victory with like Zoe or something. I don't remember exactly, but I remember the third game, uh, him picking Callista, and Callista had been really nerfed so that she would be significantly weaker if she was not around her support. Uh, so I thought 
you know, Kalissa is supposed to be a good 1v1 champion, but she has less attack speed now uh, without her support, so I don't need to ban it. I don't really need to worry about it. Uh, I'm playing Ryze, so I can just... Though in hindsight, Ryze is probably not a great 1v1 champion, but I thought I could just root him and, and like, uh, get some levels and then just out-trade him, but... I was getting destroyed from like minute one in that 1v1 game and it just felt completely unplayable. He wasn't really making any mistakes. I like the the god V, uh, like the backwards Varus arrow where they drew like the planet Earth and that the arrow was supposed to, he was supposed to shoot it behind him and then it was supposed to like circumvent the Earth and then hit the enemy team from behind. Uh, there's some image of, of where they literally drew like the Earth on the trajectory of the arrow. Uh, that was just a really, really funny meme. I don't know when that was from. Maybe that's like 2015 or something, but that's a good meme. And this would be the point in the game where Hart needs to bring people into fights. Def just finished his Trinity Force. Dade's got oh, his Shadow Plus used. Brutalizer. It's all about finding fights. Defmon going down, but is he going to be enough? Dade is going to be a. Oh! Oh! Whoa! Like oh, the Ignite! Not enough to finish off either. The burst, just enough to get Pekka the kill and survive. That's a banger. <laughs> he hits the Krug here. <laughs> Who's banger, man? He's farming. He's farming the Krugs in the middle of the fight. He hits the Krugs so that his Q is gonna kill it. Or the the Golem. This is second. They were Golems. He knows he's gonna win the one v one so easily that he just takes the time to farm the Golems in the meanwhile. That's pretty baller. Where would I rank this? Hmm. I think it's like a solid A, a little bit worse than the Caps play because I think this play, there wasn't really much for Exeke to like, much of a decision for him to make. He was just jumped on and then it's like, I don't really think he has much of a way out. He has no W, he's silenced here. The only thing he can do is really spam his ulti. I think he, he made all the like logical decisions that were good, except for auto the Krug, but I guess that's for style points. Whereas I think like, Caps and Uzi had to consciously make the decision to like go for a play or had the decision to maybe like try to flash out. Caps had the decision to just walk away if he wanted to. Uh, when they missed the QE, he could just be, oh, okay, I'm safe. But instead he uh, saw the angle to keep doing more. I think that's what makes it a better off play is that he had more, there was more of a decision on his part to consciously go for the play. I think Uzi just had a really great reaction. I can still played well, but I think it's, it's Oh, maybe I'll put it in B then, because I think it's a little bit worse of an outplay than the other two. That's still good. I talk about talk myself out of him being an A. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I watched the season one World Championship back when I was just a random solo queue player, and I watched XPK play top with Shushe mid. I think they even would like flex lane, so sometimes XPK would play mid. Uh, I watched him play in season two in like IM tournaments, and he was kind of just considered the best or one of the very best. So. Uh, he was definitely one of the players that I looked up to, and I remember playing against him in solo queue in like season one or season two. I played Morgana against his Karthus. It was one of the first times I played against uh, a pro player in mid lane, and I was just like so excited the entire time uh, to play against him. He probably had no idea who I was, but yeah, yeah, it was cool watching him play, and then him being one of the first professional mids that I ever played against. Crazy one there, but Elder gonna be on the table soon. Looking for the play again. One Double get tagged. Impact on the front line. Here comes Smoothie. Going for the knockup. They might catch in. Yes, they do. Biofrost is down. Smoothie's gonna trade his life as well, though. Four versus four. No supports alive. No Guardian Angel for Meteos, whereas TSM still have two. Impact the Weaver's the Wall! Weaver's Wall oh. catches off a couple. Now can they have the follow-up damage? A couple of stuns come in. They've got Bjergsen, and they shut him down with a 1600 damage crit. Can they get double? Blow. Meteos, another knockup, trades his life, but it does. Double lift. Gets the GA. Double He's killing a wall! Kills he everybody! Can't. They've got three. Impact goes down, and A's for TSM! Man. I ran this game, I got ahead as Vladimir, which is kind of unheard of because we had a good cheese on Jensen level two. And then I just played so bad for the rest of the game. Like, I guess my score doesn't really reflect it, but I did not have a great game. Uh, maybe I just thought the game was going to be too easy after we had such a good early game, but the uh, double F definitely carried my ass. Jensen, don't do it. Ooh, I think this one is a really nice play. Because like I said earlier, it's like, I think what makes a great outplay is just how many different decisions that you have to make. I think here the key decision for double is when is he going to use his calling. And this fight was going on for such a long time. Like, any bad Lucian player could have blown his calling. Like, like here, for example, 
or as soon as he can't auto anymore. Okay, now he can't auto anymore. Maybe he would just start using his calling now for fun. Let's see here. Yeah, he probably would instance his minions. I don't remember how fast calling kills minions. But like maybe he would use calling here on these two because he can't really auto over the wall, but he's staying patient with it. Not perfect player here, he dashes into the Jin cube, but he does get a lot of damage off. Holds his flash for a really long time, just keeps dashing. Could have also like wasted his flash at any point here. Obviously Jensen misplays here, but really good use of flash. Really good use of bolt. Just a really good play, honestly. I think the best one on the list so far. Double is better than Uzi confirmed? Might be a triple S, honestly. It's in a finals game too. Last game of finals. Obviously he didn't play perfect, but it's also a really long clip. But I think it's definitely the best play out of the bunch so far. So like one dash could have been better, the W could have been better. The rest of the play, really, really good. Both mechanical play and decision making around his flash heal and ult. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna give him the, the triple S. The godly outplay category. I mean, I always just want to play with the best players and playing against double for a long time back then. Uh, especially 2015 summer, it was just so hard for me to ever kill him. Oftentimes it's kind of the job of the mid laner to either pressure the AD carry to make him not able to hit, or kill the AD carry if he oversteps, and double just felt really hard to kill when he was playing Tristana and Jinx. Like Tristana, he would always jump my Orianna ult, so it just felt like my Orianna ults were completely useless against Tristana. His positioning was just always good while often crushing my ball in lane. Uh, so I was really happy to, 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 to play with him. I think 2016 in spring, there was a lot of uh, learning how both of us sh should fit into that roster with Yellow Star. Like we expected a lot out of Yellow Star and I don't necessarily agree with the way that Doublelift wanted Yellow Star to be just like the main shot caller, the only guy to make calls in the game. But uh, later on in that split, him and I had a good talk and we uh, really agreed on how the team uh, we'll find success and, and from then on we really started to to work together and take on different responsibilities that you know responsibilities for me that would fit me better and then ones for him that would fit him better like he was really good at lane swaps back when lane swaps was a thing so he would really run the game if it was lane swap meta um if it was more the match lanes and mid lane can have a big impact through roaming then i would kind of control the game along with sven scaren so we kind of took different things upon our shoulders to to try to win just faker nightmares you wake up in a cold sweat you're like fakers behind me i know right i'm like even though i only have a mat on the floor i think he's in the bed oh faker maybe in trouble your death mark tries to clean it up for ryu oh look at the cleanse look at the moves faker what was that faker with a huge what? play the qss i can't the believe death i just saw he that actually won that duel i love this clip I've, I've watched this so many times that eventually you start noticing all these really weird details that are happening. I think the first really funny thing is that there's two Shens, there's a Shen on each team, there's this banger 1v1 in the mid lane, and neither Shen uses ulti to, to help. Like, where, where are the Shen ultis, man? They're, they're so preoccupied about what's going on, but uh, no one is Shen ulting. What is, what is Ryo doing, man? Faker cancels his auto and then flashes, dodges out the ZQs. Oh, I think he actually got his auto off, too. It's a nice outplay. Baker had a lot of options on how to use his, uh, his W during this. I think here he's also probably assuming that the Qs are going to come out right away, so he dodges it with ult, QSSs. Uh, here he could have thrown a W already. He could have W'd and tried to run away with flash, but he like actually goes with outplay. Oh no. no! It's okay, man. Yeah, I love, I love old school. The blind pick game fives, so crazy. I don't think it's it's. Double lift outplay level. As you compare to Uzi and the Caps play. In terms of outplay, I would say it's better than Caps. Maybe slightly better than Uzi's play. Real man. You should have won this. It's a good outplay though. I'll put it in this. I think it's just that this is a play that you have to watch multiple times. Even even for me, I watch it and I'm like, oh man, I need to like get my head in the game because uh, Zed is like when both Zeds have ult, flash, W. There's just so many jumps and outplays and small ways that you can outplay someone. Uh, the QSS mechanic on both Ignite and the Zed ulti. There's just a lot of craziness in, in this play. And I think a lot of fans probably watch it and they don't even have any idea what they're seeing. Uh, because if you don't play a lot of Zed, you probably wouldn't actually understand 
uh, the options that both Zed players had. So it's also a game five in a final, I believe, which just makes it all that more exciting. The first one that comes to mind is the Maple 1v1 in 2015 IM World Championship. I don't know if that's my best one, but just when I'm thinking about my outplays, it's the first one that comes to mind. It also has a lot of the the stuff that good outplays have, where there's just a lot of mistakes happen, and I guess mistakes that have been capitalized upon, uh, which is usually what leads to a good outplay. Like Ryu made a few mistakes, Maple made a few mistakes, and I was also playing Zed in that group, so. Uh, it's a fun one. Thank you so much for watching me rank these incredible outplays. Uh, let me know how you liked the video down in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.